This ABP was realized after some individual and groups requested for copies or documentation of the CSOP engagement with the graduating class of PNPA. This presentation was shared purposely for PNPA Class 2021 last February 7 this year inside Camp Mariano and Casaneda as part of the Cadet Attachment Program or CAP, in which script was based on the actual audio recorded from the whole day presentation. In this first slide, please hold your eyebrows, don't take it adversely. It was purposely stated in that manner as I want to connect immediately. I want to influence the mindset of my audience, the cadets, to raise doubts the speaker's knowledge on the subject matter. Meaning, loading of information to their minds is fast and easily will sink in at a higher degree when the cadets has high regards or beliefs in the speaker. I can honestly say from the list of my assignments, detailed hearing that I am confident enough on details confronting police officers on the ground, being a field commander, almost of my career, being assigned in different provinces and regions, and further validated by the national awards given by two most prestigious non-government organizations, the Metrobank Foundation Astounding Filipinos and the JC's Chamber International Philippines or the JCI Philippines to career service public servants and individuals exemplifying their works that highlights positive changes and inspiration behind the transformation of our local communities. CSOP or the Community and Service Oriented Policy Let us put our sight on the two key points here delivering the basic needs or we call it services and whole of community approach. Delivering the basic needs in the slides of the follow later, we will understand why this phrase is incorporated in a policing strategy. As derived from the words alone, it is social services. Now, are police officers social workers? Good point. We will look at it later and we said the two different professions is the modern type policy profession directly connected with social works or they or are they both aligned following similar objectives whole of community approach in most slides we will be looking at activities programs where all stakeholders in a community are playing as partners or we say collaborating with each other this engagement has two primary objectives one for cadets of PNPA to fully understand by heart and mind the CSOP as a strategy and concept in police management, not just simply PCR, as branded by most police in the field. Yung tipong picture picture, post sa Facebook ng good deeds, sobrang babaw na understanding about CSOP. Floating comprehension yan. Two, for cadets to understand that this is an additional and mandatory tool that helps cure the root causes of insurgency that some sectors are playing at. Later, I will be sharing some slides coming from known advocate on anti-insurgency, publicizing the strategy and propaganda of CPP, NPA, NDF. How these activities are deceiving ordinary Filipinos, students specifically, and that the government has not acted upon for decades. The auxiliary learning objectives is for cadets to know, understand all existing programs under the DILG where we are aligned, in which existing programs play and interrelated with each other. We need to know all this to help us craft better local anti-criminality action plans in our policy career, to fully align it with other programs of the government, making it whole of government approach and lastly to have this plan or program fully funded under existing laws to fully achieve its objective and has a high impact to the community this would be the flow of my presentation remember i will not totally dive into the csop technical framework obviously we lack time i just want you all to know and understand the csop strategy 
why a modern policy is being pushed by the National Police Commission, where it stands based on low or lows, and compare it with other existing similar programs by the government, like the ELCA or the End Local Communist Armed Conflict under Executive Order 70, which is aimed to institutionalize a whole of nation approach in obtaining exclusive and sustainable peacekeeping and effective solution against terrorists. As chief of police, to specifically draw in budget to fund activities and initiatives in crime prevention and crime solution efforts under existing laws and policies. PNP Monday For academic discussion, looking at this section, civilian in character. The wisdom of the framers of the Philippine Constitution is that civilian authority is supreme over the military. Thus, the PNP was carved to function in a civilian entity. But lately, with the changing of the police ranks of the PNP to a typical military rank, example from my former rank, it was formerly police superintendent, similar to a British police rank, more civilian. To now, I am police lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant Colonel. RA 11200, newly enacted law, last February 8, 2019, modified the rank classification in the Philippine National Police to ensure improvement and smooth coordination between the police and its military counterparts, as well as to address the public's confusion with the ranks as stated by the Secretary, Internal, Local Government. It amended Section 28 of RA 6975. But what about the Philippine Constitution? Again, for academic discussion, was there an infringement of this section in the Philippine Constitution? What, what do you think? It could be or it could be not. This will be a good test case. I am citing on this classic example to drum with modern policing or community policing. We the police must know and understand first our given mandate and know how to relate this mandate with existing laws. In short, our policing efforts and our future policies to be crafted must always be aligned and follow due process or work or works under the rule of law. My point, again, is for us to fully know and understand our true mandate based on existing laws and the constitution. Knowing our mandate, we are guided in our functions. We will be employing legal and modern policing approaches based on the rule of law. We will never go wrong. Let us take a good look again of this existing law, Republic Act 6975 or the DLG Act of 1990. In its declaration of policy, it states that the state shall bolster a system of and among the citizenry. Find here is the community, local executives, and the PNP towards the delivery of the basic services to the citizenry. There we go, towards the delivery of the basic services to the citizenry. By law, we are mandated to do social works, remember. So by law, we can be social workers, at the same time, a police officer. We will soon understand in the coming slides why the law is very clear on this aspect and that the NAPOCOM has institutionalized CSOP, which is delivering the basic needs or services to the community. It is declared further as a policy that the police force shall be organized, trained, and equipped primarily, primarily for the performance of police functions. No element of the police force shall be military, nor shall any position thereof by active AFP member. Here on this existing law, Republic Act 8551, it was again clearly declared as a policy for the PNP, as an organization or agency shall be a community and service-oriented organization responsible for the maintenance of peace and order and public safety. When you leave the portals of the academy and work directly with the PNP, this PNP transformation roadmap being institutionalized dubbed as PNP Patrol Plan 2030 
is the organization's strategy that endeavors for a real and lasting transformation through the adaptation of the balance scorecard as a management and measurement tool in order to attain its vision of becoming a highly capable, effective, and credible police service. To attain the goal, we can clearly see again on its vision and mission how active community support and or community responsiveness forms part in the realization of a safer place to live, work, and do business. Of all the laws identified and explained and as, this, and as declared policy to include the Philippine Constitution, the supreme law of the land, I hope now that we are clearly, clearly reminded and we now understand accurately the PNP mandate, our mandate based on laws, because knowing our mandate, our policy and strategies in the communities we serve will be well defined legally structured, responsive, human rights based, and within international standards. Before going to the CSOP strategic content, we first run down on these few slides relating to Philippine insurgency problem. We can see that we are now in its 52 years dealing with this problem. What could be the gaps that were not realized from the security sector? That includes the PNP. Assuming we have all the cavalry, many special units, special forces, rangers, special action force commanders, the SWAG, the marines, of which are all fully trained for battle and fully equipped with armaments, my tanke, my helicopter tayo, my sweldo pa for that matter. Ano pa kaya sa tingin natin ang kulang? Let us use these slides to comprehend all dynam dynamics historical data at hand, and we analyze the given strategy and tactics ex as explained by one of our resource speaker in my ongoing OSEC mandatory course, a personality speaker who has been advocating against the CPP, NPA, and NDF. From his analysis and conclusion, we can draw in similar modern approaches. We can use as tools to fight criminality, illegal drugs, this terrorism, and even insurgencies root causes. We will understand that some insurgency root causes are parallel or similar and related to core issues besetting countries, criminality, and illegal drug problem. According to Ka Eric, former CPP NPA NDF member for 27 years, a long-time cadre of the NPA's National Operational Command, he even named former Parkway's congressman Teddy Cassini as among his contemporaries. He started with the College Editors Guild of the Philippines in March 1988 and recruited through the Bataang Magabayan and formally joined the CPP movement in December of the same year, 1988. Kai Eric stated that to defeat insurgency, we have to learn and understand the basic foundation of the approach employed, both the strategy and tactics in the perspective of the CPP, NPA, NDF, and use the same approach against it. The CPP, NPA, and NDF had employed the late General Bo Muyan Giap's operational art at the low end of the conflict spectrum. They applied and still applying General Giap's patient application of basic military principles in a unique environment, leading an ill equipped insurgent army against two Western armies of the course of 30 years and one. CPP, NPA, and NDF had been using this strategy, influenced by Mao Zedong's insurgent warfare theories in pragmatic, successfully manner known as the People's Protracted War. Strategy that even it will take another 50 years, strategy and tactics remains. It was proven in Vietnam under the late General Bo Nguyen Gia, commonly known as the Red Napoleon, Master of Revolutionary War. CPP, NPA, and NDF believes on strategy. Its application is basic and proven. When the strategy is correct, no matter how the tactics may sometimes be wrong, battles may be lost. 
but ultimately the war will be won. Basically, our government our government has been winning the battles for 52 years, but not winning the war. According to Ka Eric, the strategy employed for the past 52 years was wrong. It have been we have been winning battles, running over NPA camps, using statistics in body counts, and firearms confiscated. But the problem still persists. A classic example to educate ourselves is this slide. As a member of the security sector, let us reflect on this slide. Accordingly, this Skyrix presentation slide details how not only a wrong strategy being employed in the course of 52 years, but also in terms of understanding and employing skills being developed by all security sectors compared to red fighters. In this slide, it shows how red fighters are completely skilled in this protracted war compared to agents of the government. Security sectors need to calibrate their potentials or learn skills and training manual for that matter. Let us take a definite, definitive example. We, the police. Now, mostly mindset of police officers level on one dimension only, being a tactical skilled operator, or rather, a James Bond category, pang intel, nakalubog. Hindi tayo pwede dyan. James Bond tayo, baka masunog tayo. Pang PCR lang yan eh. We have distanced ourselves on the true nature of modern policy. Buti nga yung Red Fighter. Kaya niyang magpaputok ng AK-47. Season propagandist pa siya. Community, community organizer pa siya. Social worker at teacher pa. Kaya it took us 52 years and counting. Because we, from the security sectors, are employing our own strategy and mindset. It's good. The government is now employing the LCAC lately. And in the succeeding slides, we tend to compare it. The AFP or the Armed Forces of the Philippines is shifting strategy. CPNP kaya. Baka gusto pa rin magsundalo. And we know the LCAC implementation is causing harm to the CPP, NPA, and TF already. The Makabayan Bloc is moving heaven and earth to block the LCAC 16 billion peso funding. In the succeeding seven slides, still same slides from Ka Eric. I would just like to emphasize on the urban revolutionary mass movement or the white area legal struggle. Since I'm about to share CISO concept, it is worth knowing and sharing how these red fighters had deeply invested in the legal structure in the white area. The urban mass building, United Front building, propaganda campaign, all of which are similar in dimension and concept of the CISO approach. Their employed strategy is not totally concentrated in military strategy. It has capitalized on the political line as shown. Their goal in seizing political power is through legal struggle, white area, and armed struggle, the red area. They have deeply invested in the legal struggle. Under the urban mass building, they had fully arose, organized, and mobilized these sectors of the community. From the peasant class, we have the farmers, fishermen, indigenous people or the IP, the middle class, youth, and student sector. They have the LB LFS, the women's sector, we have the Gabriela. To win this protracted war, we need also to employ some basic concept employed by the CPP, NPA, NDF. Their urban, make or ur their urban mass based concept had made steady the recruitment pools and reliable sources of money have been able the terrorist group develop and expand its influence and operations to at least 1,000 barangays. To defeat CPP, NPA, and DF is to do a reverse engineering in a whole of government approach. Example is true employment of LCAP. 
We will soon understand how this concept helps police officers in the modern policing approach and supports the PNP over some substantiated efforts in ending the insurgency by curing the root causes through the CSOP model or CSOP model in delivering the basic needs or the basic services to the communities. CSOP concept. CSOP is basically a community policing concept. It is a modern policing concept differentiated from traditional policing or reactive policing. Community policing is both a philosophy, a way of thinking, and an organizational strategy, a way to carry out the philosophy. It allows the police and the community to work closely to make creative ways to solve problems of crime, social issues, in a certain locality. On this slide, we find some example programs initiated by Police Deputy Director General Ricardo F. De Leon, retired, now the current PPSC President. This is former New York City Police Commissioner William J. Braddon, one of the most distinguished law enforcement leaders in the, in the United States today. While serving as police commissioner, commissioner from 1994 to 1996 and 2014 to 2016 respect, respectively, New York City had achieved a phenomenal 36% drop of serious crimes, including 45% drop of murder cases. Rethinking models of conventional policing, NYPD Commissioner William Braddon considers the nine principles of community policing by Sir Robert Peel as his Bible in law enforcement to counter reactive policing, random patrols and reactive investigations, which he describes as the three R's. All have one thing in common. They are all actions taken after the fact, a traditional policing model, a reactive model. Of the nine principles of community policing, we need to discuss core ideas, three core ideas. Core idea one in community policy, as defined in the nine principles, is the goal is preventing crime, not catching criminals. An effective police station or office doesn't have to have a high arrest statistics. Its community has low crime rates. Core idea two in community policing. The key to preventing crime is earning public support and understanding. Every community member must share the responsibility of preventing crime. As if they were all volunteer members of the force, they will only accept this responsibility, responsibility if the community supports and trusts the police. Core idea 3 in community policing as defined in the nine principles is the police earn public support by respecting community principles. Winning public approval requires hard work to build reputation like impartial enforcement of laws, building officers who understand the community and using force only as a last resort. For us not to be confused on the policy approaches as we have been hearing different types of policy model here in Peru, let us focus our attention on the Philippine context by knowing the evolution of this policy model or approaches. In here, we can categorically see and differentiate the policy models through their time implementation and its concept. We can see traditional policy has been Philippine policy system in the 1990s. Concept of reactive policy. It focuses on after-the-fact actions. Sad to say, 
it is still a mindset and approach of some of our police officers until today. We need to shift this old traditional policing strategy. We need to change totally the landscape of modern policing in our country. We can also see the CUPS model established in the Philippines in the early 2000 and its concepts are identifying causes of crime and consulting the community. But again, to date, we have that totally shifted from traditional policy. Now, we have the CSOP or the CSOP system of policy. This was established in the middle of 2015. The key concept elements of this policing approach are it focuses on responding to community needs, engaging the community. It is triumvirate. We have three actor players, the LGU, DNP, and we have the community. CISO or CSOP. CISO is defined as a philosophy that promotes organizational strategies and the systematic use of partnership and problem-solving techniques to proactively address the immediate conditions that give rise to public safety issues such as crime, social disorder, and fear of crime. Actually, CSOP, it is an enhanced version of the CAPS as it involves the kind of policy that allows the community or outsiders to be part of managing police programs. Now that we are aligned with its evolution and CISOP definition, in most cases we are now enlightened. Let us now go to the CISOP core components to know the three main actors of CISOP process implementation based on existing laws. CSOP or CSOP is triumvirate, meaning there are three actors, namely the PNP, we have the LGU or the local government unit, or simply CMAYOR, and the community. The community includes all stakeholders in the community. From the model picture in the slides, you can see also the different specific tasking needed by each player. In CSOP, we need LGU or CMAYOR because number one, we really need financial resources or budget to fund our anti-crime activities and initiatives. Ang MOOE, the PNP, is not enough to cover all police operations and activities. Remember that pilay ang police station once these resources are being held or not utilized properly. Number two, we need other services of the LGU or in in-place mechanisms to augment our policy activities. Example, we have the Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office. It's on power material and equipment, etc. We need them. And three, we have the regulatory powers of the LGU. We need the power invested with LGU to enact laws to legalize our action plans directed to peacekeeping efforts, like requiring all business establishments to install CCTV in their premises. That is prevention actually, per se, in crime prevention in peace and order efforts. The LGU here also includes the barangay captains the little mayors in the barangay. In the CISO approach, the community plays also a vital role or a major actor. It comprises all the sectors living in the community. We have the women, the students, the IP, the LGBT, different clubs and organizations like the Masonry, JCs, Boy Scouts, Eagles, Alpha Phi Omega, and others. So you see these, these sectors are all target sectors, as we have mentioned in the past slides, by the CPP, NPA, and the, they have been 
organizing this. They have been mobilizing them. There is where we organize our, actually, our Barangay Peacekeeping Action Teams or BPAS from these sectors. From those sectors, we can organize our Barangay Information Networks or the BIN. We can also create from these sectors our own localized neighborhood watch or we have the Barangay Patrol. The third major player, of course, of the crime rate is the PNP. The PNP, we take the lead in arousing these sectors. We take the lead in organizing them, situ to situ, barangay to barangay, or anything of interest within the group. We then take the lead. We also lead to mobilize them into a responsive partner in anti-crime, anti-illegal drugs, and even activities towards anti-terrorism because these sectors is a major source of information valuable to our end. Going on, let us focus our sight on this phrase, delivery of basic services to the community. Or we have been telling the, base, the needs. What do we know of this delivery of basic services? As you can see from the screen, these are the basic service that needs to be delivered to the community. If we happen to see and analyze it, these are all social services. Basically, a cure or treatment for the causes that affects the very issues that's popping up, the very issues on crim criminality, and even the very issues in insurgency. Is the police going to bring all these social services to barangays? Not exactly, but we can lead in the delivery of these basic services. Example, in a certain populated barangay X, it has a high death cases perpetrated by minors committed, let's say, in a certain last year compared to other barangays. As a chief of police, you have to conduct investigation investigation on the said incident on, on the said issue so having historical data incorporated in the pnp series or the crime information reporting analysis system you have to coordinate and engage the municipal peace and order council or the mpoc mpoc headed by the mayor using the statistics source from series you can present the high incidents you can present to the mpoc or to the mayor, the modus operandi, the crime trends, and you specifically points to minors as the suspect. And these minors definitely cannot be incarcerated because of existing laws. So we have to look for solutions from both sides on the lingering problem. From there, you can suggest to the head of the Municipal Social Welfare and Development Office the municipal mayor and the Sangunyang Bayan for the building and managing of a shelter for these trouble kids because the LGO has the funds they can establish, they can actually build. For MSWDO or the social welfare, they are the ones responsible for managing the shelter and it's not the PNP. And for PNP, we can help in securing the, sh securing the shelter. So from the approach, the community is already pursuing interventions on this high high rise or the rise of crime in uh, crime of theft perpetrated by minors. So keeping the children away from from the opportunity and educating, feeding them will surely change their course. So we will be able to decrease the theft cases in that municipality. In pursuing the CISO, we have actually elements considered to attain the success and sus sustainability of the CISO approach in lower units such as municipalities, the cities, the provinces. So one vital element considered vital in attaining the success and sustainability of CISO uh, concept or CISOP approach 
is the organizational transformation. So the CISOC philosophy focuses on the way that the PNP as an organization are organized and managed and how the structure can be changed to support the philosophic, philosophical shift behind community policy. So organization transformation, it encourages the application of modern management practices to increase efficiency and effectiveness. CISO emphasizes changes in organizational structures. These to institutionalize its adoption and infuse it throughout the entire PNP organization, including the way it is managed and organized, its personnel and its technology. The PNP Patrol Plan 2030 is one transformation program to sustain the organizational shift. It must be vigorously pursued by any leadership to attain its institutionalization. And for us, younger generations of police officers will be able to see a positive outcome comes the year 2030. The other element considered in CISOP system is the use of the problem-solving model. CISOP actually identified the SARA model. It best suits in the process of engaging in the proactive and systematic examination of identified problems to develop and evaluate effective responses. So as chief of police, we should use the uh, is highly encouraged to use the SARA model because CISOP emphasizes on proactive problem solving in a systematic and routine fashion rather than responding to crime only after it occurs. So CISOP encourages all police stations to proactively develop solutions to the immediate or yung nakikita agad underlying conditions contributing to peace and order and public safety problems. Police stations are encouraged to think innovatively about their responses and view making arrests as only one of a wide array of potential responses. A major conceptual vehicle for helping field officers to think about problem solving in a structured and disciplined way is the SARA, SARA model. S for scanning, A for analysis, R for response, A for assessment. So the SARA model is a problem, problem solving model. After vigorously knowing and understanding CSOP strategy and concept, and comparing also the perceived gaps in the insurgency approach, I am more confident to say that CSOP is a modern policy model outside the box approach thinking outside the box that seeks to address modern day criminal criminality illegal drugs and the insurgency problem csop like lcap functions similarly lcap was studied properly personal experiences from former cadres were infused in its formulation and the government is sure of the right approach. The AFP had already changed gear in the approach. As CISO and LCAP are similar in nature, will the PNP change its gear, its gear also in addressing its basic mandate? Both approaches are similar. CSOP and LCAP are using the whole of government and the whole of community approach respect, respectively. Both objectives are similar. For LCAP, it tends to harmonize government development efforts and services to support, facilitate, and pursue the country's peace agenda. Meanwhile, for CSOP, it is strengthening the LGU's capability to deliver basic services in coordination and cooperation with the citizenry and other allied law enforcement agencies. So cooperation with the citizenry is actually a whole of community going on attaining effective framework of this CSOP is to harmonize budgetary requirements in all peace and order and public safety efforts with this we have to understand also that for a plan a program to succeed 
we need to detail all activities and it must be uh, budgeted. Under the NAPOCOM roadmap, as you can see, CSOP was categorically emphasized in the finance perspective of this uh, NAPOCOM roadmap. Funding priority shall be given to NAPOCOM's execution of strategic initiatives. This shall be complemented by the institutionalization of LGU fund sharing schemes under its annual investment plan. So take this take note on this annual investment plan AIP, which is from the LG, with the PNP's localized anti-criminality action plan plans or the LACA. So from here, the NAPOCOM is emphasizing actually the AIP and the LACA of the PNP. AIP from the LGU or the Annual Investment Plan of the AIP pinagpapanggan niya sa PNP's lockup in order actually to facilitate and sustain the implementation of this CISO strategy or this CISO approach. On this slide, it focuses on the cycle to obtain appropriate funding. It likewise underscores different acronyms. The lockup and POPs, P-O-P-S. First, we have to define first what is LACAP and what are POPs and other acronyms. LACAP or Local Anti-Criminality Action Plan. So we define LACAP as Local Anti-Criminality Action Plan. What is our reference? Of course, we have to have a reference. The reference of this is we have the DILG Memorandum Circular Number 2017-67. So that's the the reference for this lockup. At least meron tayong pagpunan. So lockup is an annual plan formulated by the local PNP. So tayo ang gumagawa dyan mga police. To include local anti-criminality activity, activities that are urgent and issue-based and could have been not included in the POPS plan or the POPS Peace and Order and Public Safety Plan due to its unpredictable plan. So there you have, we have the lockup is fully a plan being crafted by the local PRP. IACPSP uh, IACPSP is Integrated Area Community Public Safety Plan. Uh, for the past 20, 20 years, we have been uh, 10 years during my early, early uh, officership. The municipal city mayors, in coordination with the local peace and order council, of which is the chairman, shall develop and establish IACPSP, embracing priorities of action and program trust for implementation by the local PN. Before, we have the IACPSP, and actually, before, uh, this ICPSP is uh, being crafted only by the local PNP. Pinapakirma lang yan. So, in my experience, uh, nangyari din na we have just been, we are the ones making this ICPSP yearly. And uh, copy-paste, copy-paste lang ginagawa. So, so now, the ICPSP has already been harmonized with the Peace and Order and Public Safety Plan of the DILG. So, it is manifest, manifested as the annual implementation of PNP activities, CSOP activities. So, dito sa POPS plan or ICPSP na before, we call it POPS plan now, andun na nakamanifest yung annual implementation ng ating lakap, yung ating CSOP activities. So, now we do not use this anymore. We use POPS or the Peace and Order Public Safety. P-O-P-S or simply it is Peace and Order and Public Safety Plan. So this is a DILG actually POPS plan being uh, POPS plan being crafted by the uh, LGU. So what's the reference? So under the LG Memorandum Circular Number 2019, the latest 2019-143 and we have also the POPS planning guidelines, guidebook we have two uh, references here. So, POPS is a three-year term-based plan formulated by the Local Peace and Order Council. So, you see, we have again the POC is being mentioned here. 
So, the Municipal Peace and Order Council, actually yung mga to. The Municipal, the City Peace and Order Council, and we have also the Provincial Peace and Order Council. So, palagi nating nababangga itong POC. Pursuant to the LG Memorandum Circular 2015-128, the POPS, or the PAPS plan, is incorporated in the Comprehensive Development Plan of the LGU. So, this PAPS, it promotes also CISO approach. It promotes the CSOP approach. POPS refers to a three-year plan consisting of programs and activities to promote peace and order and public safety in a particular locality, a municipality, city, or province. Even in the barangay, we have uh, actually POPS, barangay POPS. So it is formulated by the local Peace and Order Council within 100 days after a newly elected local chief executive or the mayor assumes office. POC or the Peace and Order Council. Reference or references we have the Republic Act 7160, 7160 or the Local Government Code of the Philippines and of course the the ALGMC 2019-143. So, what is POC? In the municipalities and cities and provinces and even barangays, we have barangay, uh, we have POC or the Peace and Order Council. We have also actually regional Peace and Order Council. So, the local POC is headed by the local chief executive and served as the convergence of all peace and order and public safety programs, projects, and concerns on such matters in the locality. So, POC actually is an avenue where we discuss problems, issues, criminalities in a certain locality. From the past slides, we have been discussing about POPS, or the Peace and Order Public Safety Plan. We have been discussing POC or the Peace and Order Council of uh, certain municipalities, LGUs, uh, cities. We have also discussed ICPSP, na mayon ay POPS na yan. We have talked also about AIP, the Annual Investment Plan. And of course, the LACAP, Local Anti-Criminal Action Plan. So, What's the catch here? So the catch here now is how to fund your lockup or your local anti-criminality action plan. So from the past slides, ibabangga po natin yan. In a chief of police perspective or a commander for in a certain uh, platoon, detail in a locality. As CCSOP advocate, as CISO practitioner, we use this strategy concept in crafting a responsive action plan. So the first step is to craft your localized anti-criminality action plan or LACA based of course on combining uh, what you have, the existing historical data such as crime statistics, uh, political landscape, culture and tradition, the economic power of the LGU. So these are actually done can be, have, uh, can be done using the SARA model. And of course, babangga mo din yan yung mga engagements conducted, output mo during the engagements sa lahat ng barangays, sa lahat ng sectors. So this lockup must be a whole of community approach in its defense and defense mechanism. Uh, of course, where the LGU the community and the PNP uh, had closely identified problems so both actors provided solutions in each of the problems. Further, all gaps in, 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 in its implementation were also identified on this lockup and solutions were likewise incorporated. So in short, your lockup, it's all activities must be detailed and with corresponding budgetary requirements. So again, your lockup in all its uh, activities as uh, provided solutions by both parties must be detailed and must have corresponding 
budgetary requirements. So, hindi man pwedeng program na walang budget. So, after a series of study, you have conducted study on your lakap. So, as chief of police, you have to seek for its adoption. So, you have to adapt the lakap. So, paano i-adapt yan? So, of course, you have to settle it at the POC, yung Peace and Order Council. So, paano mo isi-settle dyan? So, of course, yung meeting supposed to be is it can, uh, POC meeting should be uh, by law, monthly kinakandak yan. So, hindi mo pwedeng i-adapt yan kung hindi ko naging meeting. So, ipa-adapt mo siya sa MPOC or CPOC for that matter. This is to legalize its funding. Better, let it be also sponsored by any sanggunyang bayan member or look for a municipal city councilor so that it will be uh, for its passage and adoption. So it will be adopted as an ordinance, hindi lang siya resolution. So mas maganda, mas maigi pa yung ordinance din. With, of course, with same objective as legalizing its budgetary requirement. So again, all activities must have a corresponding budgetary requirements in your lakap. It must be well detailed in the annual investment plan so that the uh, activities must be detailed also on the EIP. That's LGU puto. So again, we're talking of the EIP, the annual investment plan of the municipality or city concern. Uh, these documents, this can be sorted out at the municipal or city budget office. So if everything is in order, the lockup is fully interpreted, it can also now be incorporated within the three-year POPS plan. So, kung okay na yung programs actually, yung mga activities there, you can incorporate it with the Peace and Order Public Safety Plan. So, yun ang catch po dito. Meron ka ng lockup as being monitored by the higher headquarters of the PNP. Uh, meron ka ng, it's a cease of approach. So, pag pinatawag din ka na ng mayor, the LGU, na uh, to help in the crafting of the three-year POPs plan, yan, ibibigay mo na rin yung lockup for that uh, instance. So, again, uh, the catch is uh, here is, what if I assume office in the middle of the three-year term of the mayor or the local executive? So, ang catch lang dyan is uh, you know already where to look for uh, the detailed budget of the police station. So, alam mo yung budget mo na uh, saan ka kukuha, saan mo hahanapin. So, of course, you have to look it, bumunta ka, mag-report ka sa budget officer ng LGU and request for the annual investment plan, yung AIP. Annual yan. Every year yan, nakikita yan. So, makikita mo yung detailed na activities there which your former uh, pinalitan mong COP dyan kung may ginawa siya. So, paano kung walang gawa? So, that would be a problem kung walang masyadong activities na ginawa. Then, you wait for election, then you have to manage. Gagawa ka ng maganda-gandang uh, lockup para yung papalit sa'yo ay hindi na problema ng funding for his activities. So, there you have it you have now your additional MOOE from the LGU. So, additional actually ito. Meron ka pang MOOE coming from the PNP. So, to become a good COP is really to have a good coordination and collaboration among the LGU and the community. Of course, the LGU for its fund resources regulatory powers and manpower resources. The community and the mayor are the priority allies of a chief of police. The notion of LGUs are worthless. That notion is traditional policy. AIP. Uh, we have been hearing this or we have been discussing AIP. AIP is actually an annual investment plan. Uh, this refers to the annual slice of the Local Development Investment Plan, LDIP, which constitute the total resource requirements of all programs 
projects and activities. So, PPAs. So, that lack up. Yan na yung mga activities mo eh. Consisting of the annual capital expenditure capital outlay and the annual oblate operating requirements. So, of the LGU. So, from AIP, actually meron siyang capital expenditure or the capital outlay and the M MOE. So, pag gagawa tayo ng lockup natin, ma-identify din dyan yung mga projects, activities mo kung saan siya. This is as this capital outlay or is this MOE. So, yung mga activities, uh, ano naman, you can ask the expertise of our budget officers kung saan ba yung request for uh, vehicle, saan ba may lalagay yan. Could it be the capital outlay or the may lagay sa MOE. So, mas importante ang COP magaling lang maghanap kung ano yung mga problems uh, in, in coordination, collaboration with the LGU concern and community. Uh, identify nyo lang kung ano bibili natin, anong kailangan natin. Following slides are sample of an AIP. Actually, I personally crafted this during my stint as Chief of Police in Bugu City, Cebu wherein detailed activities are all aligned uh, with my lockup dubbed as Kauban 2017 and beyond. So that Kauban is actually key allies undermining Bugus adversaries and illegal drug networks. So in this AIP, it consists uh, fundings from administrative services, we have fundings on technical services, we have funding on the activities of PCR and operation services. You can see also the Kauban program activities like we have actually in the city the police gabay patrol in all schools. So, yun, pinupuntaan lahat ng school. So, may funding din yan. Mobilization of Kauban volunteers, information drives, lahat dapat may budgetary requirements yan. Uh, in this slide, you can see also intelligence network building and traffic management services have its own budget requisites too. So, hindi pwede. Meron kang mga BIN. Walang budget yan. Crime prevention and crime solution strategies likewise has its budgets like by bus operations. We have budgets coming from LGU. Implementing of search warrant applications and operations we also have budgets we request budget so you see uh, very search warrant palang mayroon ng budget so natutuwa yung mga police natin pag may budget sa mga activities hindi yung sariling bulsa in our SIP plan or case investigation plan and COP plan being crafted the case operation plan as is this, this thing required budget also. So, ito, meron ding budgeted, ano yan. Pag gumawa kami ng SIP plan or investigation, we want to solve a case, certain case, na nangyari, may nangyari sa isang locality dito sa Bugu City. Merong budget yan. So, all are aligned as MOOE or maintenance and all other operating expenses coming from the LGU. And this thing, Iba pa yung galing na MOE coming from the PNP. So, procurement of needed logistical support like purchase. In here, you see that we have to purchase a brand new Toyota pickup for SWAT personnel. Uh, it was also detailed in this AIP. Under mobility enhancement capability. And it was, it is being purchased under the capital outlet. So, yun pong pagkakaiba. So, si budget officer naman ang naglagay na dun sa uh, distinguish from MOE and capital outlet. Malapit na tayong matapos. So, here, uh, already references can be found in this CSOP Facebook private group. Uh, you just need to send requests to be accepted. So, mostly members of this uh, CISO Facebook private group are Lacan, graduates of PNP and cadets of uh, PNP. So, this is just a, a group, totally learning 
academic uh, discussions lang dito, more on CISO. So, from here, we discuss things, we educate ourselves on best practices para magamit natin sa labas. So, we see best practices from other officers. We can actually copy them and use CISO to achieve yung anong objective natin. Of course, performance tasks link will be posted in this Facebook private group. And your answers will be posted also in this group as comment. Uh, other details will be found together with the posted article. So, dito niya kayo magsasagot ng mga performance tasks niyo. Take away. As you can see, CSOP is like uh, LCAP. Oh, bakit natin... Why do we always refer LCAP and CSOP? Because LCAP is uh, yun ang sikat na ngayon. Eh, it's a... Uh, it's a government approach, well-funded too. So, in like manner, we as police officers, uh, we have to see the beauty of this ELTA and why the government is pursuing this uh, approach. CISO uh, has been there, nasa una ba ito? So, for ELTA implementation, it is a whole of government approach, a national level approach. All government machineries using their mandate, are employed to help end insurgency. While CSOP, in a chief of police perspective, is a whole of community approach. So, pag nasa locality tayo, we can use CSOP actually, na tayo mga police. Uh, CSOP approach is, it empowers all government machineries, uh, you see. Uh, from NGO actually, is andun na kasi lahat yung government machineries natin as we've been discussing uh, the social welfare, development office, disaster office, di ba? Yan ang mga kasama natin sa pag-implement ng uh, CISO or yung lockup natin. So, we use government, uh, local government machineries in a certain locality to fight, of course, criminality, illegal drugs, uh, terrorism, and insurgency problems with the mayor as the chief of police leading implementor. So, CSOP is a community-based policing strategy that can be easily aligned with any existing projects or programs of the government. So, madaling i-align actually ito. It can easily be integrated to the projects of the sitting administration or the sitting mayor. Madaling i-align talaga yan. Of course, pag mayor kasi yan, maraming social welfare developments yan, maraming program yan. And CISO can easily be assigned with this, aligned with these uh, programs. Remember, of course, officers, uh, cadets will soon become officers. Uh, your lockup being drafted must always be aligned with the mayor's priority pro projects. Of course, why do we align things? Of course, uh, i-align natin para madali ma-approve niyan. Eh, kasi mahirap sa mga ibang officers gaganda ng mga programs but they are not aligning with the priority programs of the sitting mayor so nangyari uh, naantala hindi na-approve ano minsan eh. kasi nga iba yung sinasabi ni COP iba yung ginagawa ng LGU din so dapat i-align mo madali lang naman mag-align CSOP is a modern policing standard based on the nine principles of policing by Sir Robert Peel. It also was advocated, being advocated by famous American law enforcement officer, uh, William J. Bratton, a two times police commissioner of New York City and former chief of police of the Los Angeles, Los Angeles Police Department. So to maximize your potential as a leader, and capacitate your position as chief of police, you need to invest your mind on this strategy by reading whole, whole, you read the CSOP guidelines and implementations and associate other community policing research being made articles and its applications. So remember, sign your guidelines again, be member of the CISOP group, private group. Lahat ng references po uh, nilagay namin doon. So, pwede niyong i-download lang doon. Lastly, implement your programs or ilang 
or your CISO approach wholeheartedly. So, with, with puso dapat yan. In any, of course, in any policy and capacity. So, it will explore actually. It will ignite your imagination and will keep you always relevant sa police officer in whatever capacity or assignment you will be holding in your policy career. You see? So, to end our engagement, let me share you with you an ADP, an audio-visual presentation to summarize everything what we have been discussing. It is very close to what we have talked about. It is a compiled documentation made by the ABS-CBN and GMA. It shows, this ABP shows how collaboration among the LGU, the PNP, and the community can achieve something big. Bigger than what is expected. And with impact in law enforcement with impact on the community and other government programs. So watch make parallel association and comprehend the Bugu City Story audio visual presentation. Pagbabalik ng Oplan Tokhang, disididraw ang Philippine National Police na baguhin ang pagtingin ng publiko sa kanilang operasyon. Pagditiyak pa nila, hindi ito magiging madugo katulad ng mga naunang operasyon na minsan nagpadungi sa imahe ng mga polis. Mula July 1, 2016 hanggang January 17, 2018, nasa mahigit 80,000 na ang naisagawang anti-drug operations. Mahigit 100,000 na ang mga naaresong drug personalities. Halos 4,000 drug personalities na ang napatay sa anti-drug operations. Mahigit 80,000 naman ang nalagas sa mga law enforcer hanggang nitong February 8. Yun nga lang kahit nangako silang hindi magiging madugo ang Oplan Tokhang, hindi raw nila ito masisiguro sa mga anti-drug operation. Sa kabila ng kontrobersyang kinasasangkutan ng ilang pulis, tila na iba ang 40 years old at tubong Bontok Mountain Province na si Police Superintendent Byron Alatog, nakasalukuyang Chief of Police ng Bogo City sa Cebu. Ang kanyang estilo, pagbabarabarangay at pagtatalaga ng kanyang mga tauhan sa kung saan barangay sila nakatira. Ang mga pulis na nakatalaga sa kanika nilang barangay, kinakaibigan at kinakausap ang mga drug surrenders. Yung pulis sa barangay namin, magkakaroon siya ng ownership talaga yan na hahanapin yung mga surrenders. Kasi ang ano ko sa kanila dapat balkada niyo yung mga surrenders para through text lang saan ka. O wala ka pa dito yon So madali lang yung communication. Hindi yung nakita si pulis, nagtatago na si user. Dapat magkaibigan. Pagdating naman sa mga anti-drug operations, susiraw nila ang maigting na pagpaplano upang maiwasan ang pagdanak ng dugo. Naging epektibo raw ito sa kanilang pagsugpo sa droga. Katunayan ng mga dating sumuko na raw mismo ang tumitimbre sa mga pulis kung may drug pusher na pumapasok sa kanilang lugar. Nalalaman namin kung may pumapasok na nagbebenta. Sila ang nagtetek sa amin. 
December 2016, kasagsagan ng kampanya laban sa droga ng gobyerno nang ilipat si Alatog sa Bogo. Drug infested daw noon ang dalawampu't siyam na barangay doon. Pero makalipas ang halos siyam na buwan, idineklara itong drug-free ng Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency o PIDEA. Nagawa raw niya ito nang walang nagbubuhis ng buhay. Naniniwala kasi si Alatog na mahalaga ang buhay at bawat isa may kakayahang magbago. Uh, we call it inayan or what we call that's bawal na ano. Eh, bago ka pumatay, make sure lang na kaya ng sikmura mo o kaya kaya ng konsesya mo. Ang prinsipyong ito ni Alatog, umani ng papuri at minsan na rin nailathala ng isang pahayagan abroad. Ngayong taon, isa siya sa walong awardee ng Outstanding Young Men ng Junior Chamber International Philippines. Kasama niya rito ang Olympian na si Heidelin Diaz. I've, I've read everyone's profile and um, for me personally, um, what we're dealing for for this term kasi is war on drugs, um, we, how to achieve peace. And um, si Sir Byron was able to, to achieve peace. He was able to achieve to be the, the first drug-free city in the whole Philippines without the use of force. Malaki ang pasasalamat ni Alatog sa pagkilala sa kanya. Pero higit dito ang hangarin niya maging ehemplo sa mga kapwa pulis para tuluyang mabago ang negatibong pagtingin sa kanila ng publiko. Mariz Umali, GMA News. Problema sa ilegal na droga ang nadatna ni Superintendent Byron Alyatog nang maupong hepe ng Bogo City sa Cebu, walong buwan na ang nakalilipas. Dati siyang nadistino sa CIDG sa Calabarzon, pero inilipat ng Bogo City sa kasagsagad ng War on Drugs campaign ng Administrasyong Duterte. Kwento niya, nahirapan siya nung una. They don't know yung barangay drug peeling operations. Drug infested daw ang lahat ng barangay sa lungsod. Pero pagkalipas ng walong buwan, idiniklara ng PDEA maging ng Cebu Provincial Anti-Drug Abuse Office at Cebu Provincial Police na drug-free na ang lungsod. Nag-certify na, drug cleared sila. Pero nagawa ito nang walang nagbubuwis ng buhay. Ang estilo ni Hepe, nagbabarabarangay siya at hinihimok ang mga drug addict at pusher na magbagong buhay. We were there for the barangays. Uh, we acted as kind of siguro simply saying uh, big brother to the barangays and then we assisted them. A safe or peaceful uh, city or municipality is the primary responsibility of the local executive, meaning the mayor. With the police as the mayor's uh, peacekeeping force, if there are many drug addicts in a, in a city or municipality, that means that the drug problem uh, is not being addressed uh, properly. The first approach we have here is actually a form of empowerment, partnership and teamwork. So, you know, that's the mayor to, at least we have to talk with all the barangay chairman here in Bogo City, 29 barangays. So, kinautak namin na sila and uh, in-explain namin how the barangay drug sharing operations work. Hindi lang PNP dapat ang gagalaw dito. So, it took us a month na naintindihan naman ng mga barangay natin. Ang sabi ng mayor is, uh, you have to do what you have to do. Kung if your life is in danger, then... Uh, It has to be done. As much as possible, kung iwasan natin may mamamatay, kung hindi naman necessary na we have to kill the, the suspect, then uh, let justice system work. Saka dito naman sa Bubu City, ang tao dito is they are not that aggressive. Uh, lahat ng operations, well planned yan. Uh, madali namang makuha yung mga suspects without any uh, uh, bloodshed.